This is the naked truth about real estate investing. Your host, Javier, has already been through all the brain damage of this business, so you don't have to go through it. That way, you're not exposed to all of the risk of losing your shirt or getting caught with your pants down. So let's dive into another no BS episode right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I trust you are doing well. And as you can see, today's title, I'm going to talk about when I had 32 cents in the bank account. So I'm going to give it to you straight, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it's not all going to be doom and gloom, right? There'll be some happy moments, right? There's the story still being told, and uh, we all love happy endings. Got to punch the bad guy in the face. Got to kiss the baby, save the world, and all that good stuff, right? So, but the story is still being made, but I have a lot of pretty good stories, you know, that happened to me. We're going to bring on some guests as well. They can share some of their challenges. But I just want everybody to, you know, listen and say, hey, you know, Javier can do it. I can do it, right? I'm not the smartest guy in the world, you know, and if I can get this business done, I'm sure you can do just fine and a lot better and definitely kill it, you know, definitely kill it. So I'm just going to get right to it. I'm going to try not to get all choked up super emotional here, but, um, you know, I'm just going to share and, you know, the struggles, and, you know, it's just, you know, they're real, right. And, you know, at some point something's got to give, you got to hit low rock bottom, right. What did somebody say? If, uh, you, you, you hit rock bottom, you're stuck in a hole, dig yourself out of it. I don't know how that works. Can't dig yourself out of a hole, but whatever. Right. You know what I mean? January 2017, on the on New Year's Day, driving back, um, driving back home, I got to pull over to the bank, hit the ATM, because I had written a rent check, right, the week, you know, a few days before, and it was in the mail. And I said, hey, once my landlord gets my, my, my check and he cashes it, it's going to bounce. So I had to turn around and I had asked my kids for the Christmas money. I had 32 cents in the account, 32 cents. You know, my kids didn't care. My kids were that, that time, there were like six and 12 and maybe 15, 16. I had three kids with me and they didn't care. They just gave me the money and uh, put it in the ATM. That was, that, was, that was pretty brutal for me. And I had my wife sitting there uh, on, on the front seat and she was just, she didn't say anything. She could just see my look in my face. It was, um, I'm sure it was, uh, she probably never seen that before. But let me back up a little bit, you know, how I got to that situation. So one thing that I did learn from that, and hopefully I don't forget to mention it, is um, you got to manage your cash. You got to make sure your cash flow is good. And, um, you're, you know, you're not cash poor. So we had a couple of projects, you know, I was wholesaling some properties, we're closing some properties. And some fell through, some got pushed out, you know, property we were going to close on, you know, got canceled. So it's like, you know, I had bills to pay and it's just so much money going out, money coming in. It's like, bam, I got a lot of money this month. Man, I got no money next month. Bam, I got money for the next two, three months. Like, man, I got no money for the next two months. It's just like up and down, right? It's running a business. You got to make sure that cash flow is pretty consistent and you don't overextend yourself. So it kind of, you know, everything hit kind of at the same time where something didn't close, something got pushed out, something got canceled, you know, or whatever it was. And it just, you know, extra rehab money, bought another property, had to give another down payment. It just, everything hit kind of around the, wrong, around the same time. And I was expecting some money back, right? So I was cash poor for sure. And uh, driving home, you know, it's... You know, that night, I mean, I couldn't sleep, right? That's when I got, I felt the worst. And uh, I told myself, um, you know what, just quit. You know, like the, this voice inside of me kept telling me, you should just quit. You know, it's, you know, that's it. You know, just better off, just quit and, you know, cut your losses and, you know, just, just figure out how you're going to pay everybody back, sell what you got. Um, it's not worth it. You know, it's not worth it. It's too much work. I mean, I had this voice just in my mind, man. And I started feeling sorry for myself. You know, I've never cried in real estate. I've gotten close. That's probably the closest I've ever come to crying in real estate. And I hope if I do cry in real estate, it's because of happiness, right? Not because something bad's happening. But what's that uh, movie? Um, 
uh, with Tom Hanks that he has the baseball league. Uh, geez, I forgot the name of that movie, but uh, it's, no, it's no crying in real estate, right? No crying in baseball. So it's, it's no, 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 no crying in real estate. But uh, I mean, that night I felt sorry for myself and, and I'm actually really hard, you know, when it comes to, uh, to myself, I'm, I'm hard on myself. You know, I, I hold myself to a certain standard and I push myself and I don't like it when I make mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. Um, every time, uh, you know, I've been married 23 years and since the day I, be, uh, I got married, I've become a professional apologizer. <laughs> so I make a lot of mistakes, trust me. But, um, you know, I just, I, I felt really strange, right? You know, having all those negative thoughts in my mind, you know, of quitting and just giving up, you know, that just made me feel really uncomfortable. And uh, I could have taken two different decisions, right? And one, I could have been like, yeah, you know what? Screw it, I'm done. Or, you know, say, hey, it's not, I'm not going to quit, right? The price is too high to quit. The price is just too high to quit. So, you know, I, I try to think positive, get this uh, bad energy, just the bad thoughts out of my mind. And I say, hey, look, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, just work a little smarter, you know, see what I can do. Let me ask for some help. Let me just, let me see, ask for a couple of extensions here and there. Let me see what I can do. Try to close this deal that fell apart, et cetera, right? So, you know, I just got up the next day and I was super positive. I started, you know, just going back to, you know, business as usual, knowing that in, you know, in probably the next week or two, I was going to be pretty much out of money, right? And just one thing fell on top of the other. And all of a sudden, like, hey, this deal that wasn't going to get pushed, got, hey, we're going to close early and this one happened, boom, 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 boom. And everything just kind of fell in place. I think that was crucial for me. I don't know if it was the universe testing me to see if, uh, you know, um, if I had the balls to stick with it. Um, and if there's any ladies here listening to me, um, I don't know if I can say that gender neutral. I don't know. That's a way to say that. But, um, you know, I just basically say, hey, if I can stomach it, right? You know, is the universe telling me, you know, are you going to, are you going to overcome this? And if you do, well, here's some more, right? Let's see if you can overcome this. But, you know, I'm, I'm just glad I didn't quit. You know, I just kept thinking to myself the, you know, the price is too high for me to quit. And that right there, actually, when I hit kind of that rock bottom, it kind of propelled me. Like it was like, bam, right. Just hit one thing. I hit like a stride. You know, I definitely hit a stride. I just, just, just kept going forward and forward. I got, I got more deals under contract, started buying more properties, uh, started being more profitable and, you know, started building better systems to the point to where make, make this a happy story, right? Taking my kids Christmas money to the next year around the summertime, I get a call from like uh, where I got my education for real estate. It was like the rich dad, poor dad kind of seminars that go around town. And I got a call or an email saying, Hey, we had nominated you for, you know, the Hall of Fame and uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And they're like, you know, they have maybe, I don't know, 5,000, 20,000 students a year. I have no idea how many students they have, but I know it's a lot. And uh, they only choose about seven a year, right? And for me, I got chosen that year and I had to fill all, all these forms and applications and send it in, send my, all my proof and statements and all these HUD statements and closing settlements and it took like two or three months. And then I got a reply back saying, hey, you've been awarded the Hall of Fame and come out to Vegas. I'm like, ooh, going to Vegas. And that actually was the first time that I even ever started networking. You know, the first time that I started networking, connecting with other, other investors and kind of not being so lonely in a way, because when I just got started, I just, just started working hard. So it was a little bit lonely. I just felt like I was on my own. And uh, after I started connecting with folks from 2018 to now, I mean, you know, it's just been night and day, right? Night and day. So, Going from a sad story, right to the bottom, you know, and then just springboard, you know, to you know, crushing it, you know, fi flipping fifty houses a year, and and uh, getting nominated and awarded the Hall of Fame for the rich dad, poor dad, and uh, I, I thought I was gonna cry. I'm like, man, this is awesome. I had a I had to do a speech, and uh, I, I was just happy. I was just happy. My wife was there, and met a lot of new friends, and still friends with them today. Uh, from, you know, from, from that event. So how one decision can definitely affect, right. You know, the rest of your life, you know? So for me, that was, that was key. And at that same event, I met my buddy, Tim buying uh, multifamily and he planted that seed say, Hey man, buy an apartment building and that'll change the rest of your life. Right. Just buy the good one. 
And he planted that seed that time. And I think it had taken me like a year later to like, I'm a little slow, you know, I'm not the smartest guy, you know, I'm a C plus student. I got a high school degree and you know, I can't, I can't speak right. I can't spell. You guys see my, my, my social media post. Uh, I misspell everything. And my wife will go in there and she'll, uh, she'll be like, honey, it's uh, this is the way you spell that. I'm like, ah, whatever. And, um, you know, it took me about a year, right? I was pretty slow to realize like, Hey, let me, let me, let me give this shot at this multifamily. Right. And then that was in late 2019 when I got started in multifamily. Right. And fast forward to today, you know, we, we're doing, we're doing pretty, pretty well. So 32 cents in the bank account, you know, it's, you know, it doesn't scare me anymore. Put it that way. But at the same time, you do have to put systems in place so you don't get to that point again. Right. Uh, you know, that, that's seared into my mind. Yeah, I'll never let it happen again. Now, maybe it happens so I can do what I did now, but no, I don't want that to happen, right? I'd rather do it with money in the bank. You know, I'd rather have problems and have money in the bank so I can at least try to pivot a little bit better. So you got to be able to pivot uh, for sure if uh, you notice that whatever you're doing, it's not, it's not quite working. It's not, it's not going as planned. So, hey, that's my, that's my 32 cents in the bank story. Uh, just want to encourage somebody out there, you know, it doesn't have to be in real estate, but just in life in general, in business and, you know, whatever you're going through, right. It's, it's always light at the end of the tunnel and uh, don't quit. The price is uh, too high, you know, and that's just the naked truth about real estate. You know, we're going to give it to you straight and that's just the naked truth. So we'll see you in the next episode. You're invited to leave an honest written review and share this episode with a friend. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you on the next episode.